logarithmic differentiation. All right, and this is when you use logarithms to differentiate non-logarithmic functions. All right, this is one example of it. All right, so I just verbally said that. Maybe I should write that down. All right, so logarithmic differentiation. Okay. Um, is when you use, let's just say logs to differentiate non logarithmic functions. Okay, so we're going to do this. All right, there's like four steps. I, for some reason, I think there's six steps, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'm not going to list the steps individually here where I'll list them as we do this. All right, but basically what this is, I can give you some pretty nasty rational functions. All right. Um, I could give you rational functions where you had cube roots or square roots in the top and square roots in the bottom, all right? And then like stop thinking about it, rational functions. So some nasty numerator and some nasty denominator, all right? But it would look like a rational function. So some of you might go, oh, well, I'm going to do quotient rule because it's a rational function and it's a quotient, all right? But then, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, you can do that but the algebra just is so intense, it's not even funny, okay? So if we could take a complicated rational expression and you take the log of both sides of this equation and then manipulate with our log rules and make it a whole lot simpler, then the derivative, taking that derivative is a lot easier, all right? So that's our goal, all right? So. I know I just wasted an entire piece of paper, but I want a brand new piece of paper to start this. I want literally at the very top because they are long, all right? There's no way around it. However, if you tried doing the quotient rule, you'd have just as long on this, okay? So um, let's suppose that we had y equals x minus two to the second power all over the square root of x squared plus one and I ask you to take the derivative. All right, now, when we take a written test, when I wanna force you to use logarithmic differentiation, I'm gonna say, find the derivative using logarithmic differentiation. And then that's not gonna allow you to use any other method. You gotta use the method I tell you to, okay? Um, because like I said, some of you are gonna look at this and go, that's a quotient. Well, I'm gonna do quotient rule, all right? And you can, it just makes the algebra a whole lot harder. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to try to break this down so that it's a little bit easier. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Okay, I'll try to write what I'm doing, my steps here in red. Okay, so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to go natural log of y is equal to the natural log of this x minus 2 to the second all over the square root of x squared plus one. All right, and I'm taking the log of all that. Probably I'll put all brackets in there. All right, so that's step one, take the log of both sides. Okay, now this, I'm going to simplify using my log properties. All right, so simplify using log properties. Okay, so left-hand side, not gonna do anything with it. So it's gonna stay natural log of y. All right, now this, I am gonna like, if you can do more than one thing, then this is gonna be great. All right, on this, this I see division, right? So I know I have subtraction. All right, this numerator is something raised to the second power, which means can't I jump the frog, right? So I can jump the frog, natural log of x minus two, and then minus, isn't that bottom, if I put it in exponential form, I'll have an exponent of one half. So again, I can jump the frog. So I'm gonna have a one half natural log of an x squared plus one, okay? So now, can't I take the derivative of natural log of x over two really easy? And I take the derivative of natural log x squared plus one really easy, all right? So that's the whole point of this, okay? 
Um, so I am, when I do differentiate because of this over here, I, this is the natural log of y, right? But this is the natural log of x. I'm implicitly differentiation, differentiating with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate implicitly. And I have to, this is implicit differentiation because of that y right there. These over here are x's, this here is a y. All right, so how do we do it? We slap in that y prime. Right? So if I take the derivative of natural log of y, well, y is my u, right? So it would be y prime over y. Okay? So this right here, doing implicit differentiation, is always going to be y prime over y. And I threw it's implicit, it's implicit differentiation. Okay. So once you get the hang of that, that's always the same. It's really easy. I just kind of wanted to go into a nice little detail there. Okay, now again, this is a two in front of this. So it's that constant multiplier rule. So I don't need do product rule. I can just know it's gonna be two times. All right, derivative of X minus two is one over X minus two. All right, look how fast that was. All right, again, this is that constant multiplier rule. Just because So if I did product rule, that second term would go to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna have a one half. Now, derivative here, derivative of x squared plus 1 is going to be a 2x over the x squared plus 1. All right, look how simple that was. Okay, massively simple, right? Now, clean it up. Okay, so y prime over y is equal to a 2 over an x minus 2 minus um, <clears throat> uh, 2x. And then what do we want to do here? Let's leave this. Uh, oh, wait, no, let's not do that. I'm almost asleep. Can't I cross out the twos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys were going to let me not simplify this right. All right, let's cross out that two because I want this to be a whole lot simpler. Okay, so cross out the twos and then I'm going to have an x over an x squared plus one. <coughs> okay, now here comes your algebra on steroids. Okay, we've talked about it before. All right, what do I want you to do next? Look at that and tell me what I want you to think of next. What do I have to do? Somebody tell me. Common Look. denominators? Yeah, common denominators. Add these two things. All right, get common denominators, put them together. All right, and actually this isn't too bad. All right, really, because what? This fraction just needs to be multiplied by x squared plus one. All right, so x squared plus one over x squared plus one. All right, and then this fraction, what? Needs to be multiplied by x minus two. So x minus two over x minus two. All right, well, so because we know common denominators is just gonna be both of those terms, all right? And then on top, so I'm gonna have a y prime over a y equals, distribute there on that numerator, 2x squared plus 2, all right, minus, it's a minus, all right, I'm going to show all the steps because I don't want you to drop a negative here, so minus x times x minus 2, so that'd be an x squared minus 2x, all right, I put those brackets around there because it's minus everything that comes to the right, so you're going to have to distribute that negative, all right, all over the x minus 2 and the x squared plus 1. Okay, now we're going to keep going. All right, I'm just running it over here. Okay, so now let's distribute that negative. So I'm going to have a y prime over a y equals a 2x squared plus 2 minus x squared plus 2x. All right, all I did was distribute the negative there. So is everybody good there? Yell at me if I lose you, okay? Now I need to combine some like terms. So y prime over y. Let's see, x squared's there. 2x squared minus x squared is just going to give me an x squared. And then I'm going to have a plus 2x. I'm going to go ahead and put them in you know, standard form. And then plus 2 all over x minus 2, x squared plus 1, okay? Are we good? Now, have I, I've simplified this, right? The best I can, that top does not factor, all right, because two times or two times one is the only thing I can get there. I can't get a two there, so I can't factor the top. Nothing's going to cross out, all right? Now, Are we going to multiply both sides by y? 
Huh, yes, and that's where I'm going because then that's my next step. All right. After yeah, I, I had a simplified this, after I have simplified this, okay, um, then then you're gonna solve for y prime. Now, why though? Because what was my original question? My original question was find the derivative, right? There's y prime. I need to solve for y prime because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the derivative. All right. So. Um, let's not say multiply by let's say um let's say solve for y prime which means multiply both sides by y all right but but because we're trying to find the derivative let's say solve for y prime all right so i'm going to multiply this side by y boom crosses out i'm going to multiply this side times y right so this nasty thing times y okay now watch this y prime is equal to now let's go back that was the beginning of what i wrote right because this is a second separate piece of paper all right do i know what y equals doesn't y equal what i started with to begin with so can't i replace that so my final derivative answer x squared plus 2x plus 2 all over x minus 2, x squared plus 1. All right, this whole thing times y, but I know from the beginning of the problem that y is x squared or x minus 2 squared all over the square root of x squared plus 1. So then what did I do right here? I solve for y prime and then substitute um, y back in. Okay, I probably didn't phrase that the best I could English wise, but so I substitute y back in from the original problem. Okay, now technically, could I keep going here and go crazy on the algebra? Yes, I could. All right, but for you guys, the only thing that I want from you is if I get you to simplify this and then get down to the step where I multiply both sides by one and then you plug it back in, I know you understand conceptually that what you're doing. All right, so if you get to this point, you don't have to go any farther. All right, now I will expect in this line right here, I will expect you to be able to get common denominators. All right, that's an easy enough skill. You should be able to handle it. So this expression on this right-hand side, you're going to compress as much as you can, all right, down to a simplified, well, I won't say nice, but simplified rational expression, multiplied by y, replace y. Okay. Um, like on the bottom of this one, it's super easy to just cross out the x minus twos. Should we go ahead and do that? or just um, completely right. it. it is simple it is really easy to do that all right and then technically it's really easy to put these two things together all right but i'm not going to make you do that all right and, and there's pros and cons to it if you're in a college class they might make you do that um here let's get rid of that and let's go to this let's let me fold this out because i will keep going all right um because technically you guys can do it, but what I would hate to happen is I would hate for you to do it and then all of a sudden screw your algebra up. Okay, but you're right that you saw that that's good that the x minus twos cross out. All right, and then watch what I do here. Okay, um, y prime, let's leave this numerator as an x squared plus two x plus two. All right, let's go ahead and cross one of those out. All right, which means then I'd only have one left in the numerator, right? So x minus two in the numerator. All right, now watch what I do down here at the bottom. This is just a binomial of x squared plus one, right? X squared plus one. All right, technically to the first power, right? It's one binomial. If I turn this into exponential form, don't I have an x squared plus one to the one half power, right? When, when multiplying like bases, I add the exponents, right? When multiplying like bases, I add the exponents. Okay, one plus one half. Is that like three halves? All right, so then technically, 
don't I have x squared plus 2x plus 2 all over an x minus 2? And then don't I really have an x squared plus 1, um, an x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves, but that would be the square root of that to the third power. So see, I can go farther and I can clean it up. And I don't know, in a, in a college class, in a college class, they might make you go all the way down to there. All right, but in all honesty, if you can get here, I'm gonna be happy.